You know, sometimes when a person is sick, and may Allah protect us, may Allah grant us cure. I'm just using one example, but it can happen even to those who have had financial difficulty or any other form of difficulty. Let's use the issue of sickness because everyone at some stage gets sick. So we go to the doctor, we try this, we try that. Then someone comes and tell us, okay, try this, try something else, you know, try this medication perhaps which is herbal. And Alhamdulillah, we try it and sometimes we are cured. But sometimes people are not cured and they don't understand it's the plan of Allah. And Allah has kept your duty to look after your health. And at a certain point, Allah takes away even those who are very healthy. You will still go away. You will still have to leave. So what happens is after a while in our desperation to get better, we begin to do things that are totally unacceptable and the excuse we use but i need to get better it's my health come on no matter who is going to cure me it's okay ultimately i say bismillah then i engage in hocus pocus wow. is that what it is is that what i should be doing so what was the belief in allah when allah says وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Allahu Akbar. People called Sulaiman a disbeliever. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says, Sulaiman was not a disbeliever. But the devils were the ones who disbelieved by teaching people magic. So there is an acknowledgement in Islam of magic. It exists. It is there. But to partake in it, to engage in it, to do it, and to be associated with it is what is totally prohibited. It can actually take you out of the fold of belief in Allah. So it is there. The jinn exists. We don't deny that. This is why the last two surahs of the Quran, if only we knew the meanings of it, we would then be able to understand and we won't be confused. But the problem is, we read, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ مِن شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبَ وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدَ do you know what it means? The problem is, I just know that it will give me protection from the devil. But find out what it means as well. And you need to know when you read it, concentrate on the meaning. Then you see your confusion will go. Because there are people who read the surahs and they continue reading everything. But they are the first people who go to witch doctors and fortune tellers. And they are the ones who would claim that it's because I'm in a desperate situation that I'm doing this. But Allah says, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Who is that besides Allah that responds the call of the distressed when he is in distress? Who, who responds the call of the one who is in distress besides Allah? It is Allah who responds correctly. And this is why my brothers and sisters, remember when you are in distress, do not turn to those besides Allah in a way that will displease Allah. You might want to go to the doctor. You might want to ask someone's help. You might want to seek financial help, but not in a way that will displease Allah. And in order to know what displeases Allah, you just need to read the Quran. We're talking about jinn a few minutes ago. And look, there is a surah in the Quran called Surat Al-Jinn. But the problem is we know that there is a surah called Al-Jinn. We've never been through its meaning. That's why I started off by saying, go through the meanings of the Quran because nobody will be able to con you or confuse you because now you know Someone says, but you can do this. Say, but hang on, I read the Quran and I've come across a verse that says this. They'll just look at you and say, oh, oh. Why? Because now they know they cannot lie to you. So Allah says, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا Allah speaks about how there were people from mankind who sought the assistance of the jinn kind. So the jinn kind led them further astray, further astray. So do you still want to go and seek the help of the jinn kind? Well, look what the Quran says. They will lead you further astray. You know, I came across a man who met me and he told me, he says, you know, I have a jinn. I said, good for you. <laughs> Did you rub one of these lanterns before? He said, I'm not joking. <laughs> so I said, okay, so 
What's the big deal? He says, say what you want, I get it done for you. I said, I don't want that type of cash or that type of help or that type of thing. I worship Allah. This is my test. He says, but I promise you, I can bring you what you like. You want to eat the dates of Saudi Arabia? I can bring them from Medina as fresh as ever here and now. I looked at him and I know that it's possible because he, he, there are jinn and jinn. Uh, it is confirmed in the Sharia that they exist and we know that. And subhanallah, they do possess people and things do happen. You read the Quran and you'll understand. You'll understand the exact position of it. But to be enticed by that and say, yes, let's go for it. Have the dates of Medina. Oh, let's go. Next thing, plop, the date comes down. And you're having the date. What do you think? No, the date didn't come. When I was, I refused, subhanallah. I told him, no way. He says, but this jinn I have is a sahabi. <laughs> sahabi. He's a Muslim. He has met so and so, so and so, and so many different uh, companions, and he has taken hadith directly. Okay? So I said, so now? He said, so he's given me narrations. And you know how it says, uh, An Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, and their name, chain of narrations, and so on. This man says, bugger all that. It's me through the jinn to the Prophet. Straight. So you can add and subtract in your deen as and when you wish because a certain man told you that he saw the Prophet through a jinn or he saw him in a dream and he forgot 50 hadith and he quickly gave them to me. Uh, uh, Subhanallah, I'm shocked that people can believe that. If that was the case, we can all start dreaming. And every one of us will say, well, I had a dream. And you know what? Uh, there was a message that was forgotten at the time. So now what has happened is it was given to me. Don't you read the Quran where Allah says, "Al-yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina." This day I have completed your faith. I have perfected your deen. I have completed it. And my gift upon you is total. It is complete. There is nothing to add and subtract in the deen. It's all done. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the companions, "Have I delivered the message?" They said, yes, you have. He says, Allahumma fashhad. Oh Allah, bear witness. I conveyed it. It's over. Ashhadu annaka qad ballaghta risalata wa addayta al-amanata. We bear witness. And they bore witness that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has delivered the message. And he has delivered the amana, the trust that was placed on his shoulders. But subhanallah, here comes a man who tells you, this jinn is a sahabi. So I told him, do you know what? Let me tell you that the jinn are liars. They lie. Don't believe even one word, not even one. When the Quran says, Ya ma'shar al-jinni qad istakthartum min al-ins. Read about what Allah says regarding the jinn and the ins, mankind and jinn kind. Allah says, O oh jinn kind, you have now made enough fools of mankind. One of the translations. You have now, you know, you've got a lot of your followers amongst mankind. We follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day of judgment, you will find the two of them or jinn kind and mankind separating ways. And this is why Allah says, وَقَالَ أَوْلِيَاءُهُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ رَبَّنَا اسْتَمْتَعَ بَعْضُنَا بِبَعْضُ وَبَلَغْنَا أَجَلَنَا الَّذِي أَجَّلْتَ لَنَا قَالَ النَّارُ مَثْوَاكُمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ Powerful verse where Allah says, On that day, they will disassociate themselves from one another. And they will say, you know what? We just enjoyed each other's company for a while in this world and we enjoyed that give and take between us but Allah was forgotten the message of Allah was removed from the equation so as a result Allah says annaru mathwakum that fire is the abode may Allah protect us who wants to go into the fire who wants to be entering jahannam we hear about it may Allah protect us from jahannam if you want to be protected from jahannam you need knowledge of how to be protected from it don't just believe anything and everything. People tell you that you know what? And this is another very, very serious issue. I firmly believe that 100% of the time when someone tells you that someone has done black magic upon you and they issue you with a name, the name is wrong. You may have black magic. 
You may be a possessed person, but the name they gave you is absolute nonsense. Totally nonsense. And you, there will be a little bit of politics between you and that person because the jinn gives the name to whoever it is. He can be a sheikh, as pious as he might be in terms of reading salah in the first saf. But believe me, the confusion is he thinks the jinn are telling the truth. The jinn are telling you a lie. Total lie. Complete false. They, are, they want to create chaos amongst you, your family members especially. The jinn, one of their main aims is to destroy your family. So nine times out of ten, when you are affected by something, here will come a big sheikh and he'll tell you, you know, you are possessed. Maybe that might be right. We still give credit sometimes maybe to that. And then he will tell you one of your own relatives did it and he might even give you a name. But that name will be of someone who's close to you in relation or in friendship. Why? Because go to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This devil teaches people how to split husband and wife. This is what he teaches. Why? Because the core, if the core is split, there is confusion in the rest of the family. I don't talk to my sister for 20 years, someone told me. Why? Because some sheikh told me she did magic. And believe me, the sister is the furthest away from being accused. And another thing is, one day you saw the sister driving past a certain village and you said, what was she doing there? She went to see the witch doctor in order to engage in the magic. Audhu billah. Shaitan is confusing you, playing with your mind. Do you not believe in Allah? Don't you know why the last two surahs of the Quran were revealed? They were revealed to protect yourselves from this type of item and ourselves as, as believers. So why don't you recite it? Why don't you have conviction in Allah? Allah will cure you. Continue in the correct path. Don't fall by destroying relations with those who are totally innocent solely because one man claimed to know the unseen. Believe me, like I said, he got his information from the jinn if he did and the jinn they lie and they are laughing now laughing to say wow we got them exactly where we wanted to get them where well the brothers accusing the sister and the in-laws and so on and these people are accusing each other and the ummah is now in chaos why every one of us accusing the other you look at the sister innocent person with a lot of goodness and sincerity and you run in another another direction as a sister in Islam subhanallah because you have a dirty belief in your heart regarding someone who's totally innocent. Why? You just believe the jinn. So where is Allah in the equation? Where is Allah? These are innocent people. And I know people who are affected are so passionate that even what I'm saying now, they'll say this man doesn't know. Because we are passionate. We desperately need to blame someone. But because we have sometimes become confused by the devil we, in our desperation to blame someone for our problem, we start doing the wrong thing. Remember this, it's wrong. And the same way, as I was mentioning a few moments ago, we begin to believe the devil, literally the devil, shaitan, iblis's army. And they come to us and say, this person did that and that person did this. And this is why you are sick. And that's why. And then what they say is, look, I will do something and you will be cured. So subhanallah, we go and they do something and we are cured. Well, if what they did was outside of what Allah has asked us to do, outside of that which was permissible, then remember, no matter how cured you have become, you failed your test. You failed your test.